Goal today is to be able to use the horizontal line test to determine inverse functions and also find the uh, find inverse functions algebraically and graphically. And like I said before, more than likely, it should look familiar to you all when you come with this in algebra two. Okay? So to start off, two relations are inverse relations if and only if one relation contains the element B A whenever the other relationship contains the element A, B. Inverse relations are the opposite of each other, okay? So basically we're switching their X and Y values to get your points on your inverse, okay? This should look familiar. If you look down here at the table, for your one function, you have negative five, negative three, negative three, zero, zero, one, and so on and so forth. But for your inverse, you have the points negative three, negative five, zero, negative three, one, zero. You're basically taking the points, the X and Y points, and you're changing places, okay? That's how you get the points for your inverse. Inverse functions, graphically, they're reflected over a particular line. Anybody remember what that line is? Two? The, one by one the one by one diagonal is the line with the equation. Uh, y equals uh, y equals x. Y equals x. Nx plus b. The slope is one and it crosses the y-axis at zero. So y equals x. So you have a diagonal line of y equals x where this graph. is basically swapping over. Thanks. It's a lot harder trying to do it looking forward. Oh, yeah, your lines are a little squiggly. Yeah, that's why I have a little straight line. I couldn't use it, but you know. So there you go. Okay? But that's the line in which they reflect over. Okay? So just keep that in mind. X and Y switch. That's inverse. The notation for an inverse function is f to the negative 1 of x. Okay, that's how you'll know that you're dealing with your inverse. They won't always say, you know, find the inverse f to the negative 1 of x. They might just say, find f to the negative 1 of x. You need to be able to recognize that that means inverse. Okay? And realize that f will change based off of the function. It could be g, it could be h. But no matter what, that negative one in the exponent represents inverse. Now, a function has an inverse function if and only if each horizontal line intersects the graph of the function in at most one point. This is known as the horizontal line test. Very similar to the vertical line test. Okay, what does the vertical line test tell us? If it's a function or not. Okay, and remember, to be a function, it cannot cross that vertical line no more than one time. Same concept with the horizontal line test. It cannot cross a horizontal line no more than once in order to be a function. If a function passes the horizontal line test, then it's said to be one-to-one -one, because there's no x value. Uh, it's matched with no more than one y value and vice versa. No one y value is matched with no more than one x value. Exactly. So it would, you wouldn't have an inverse, okay? So a quadratic, a quadratic would not pass your horizontal line test, which means that you wouldn't have an inverse function. Absolute value would not pass the horizontal line test. Does everybody see that? Is there another one of our eight parent functions that we went over that would not pass the horizontal line test? Well, let's go through them, okay? First off, okay, those are two out of the eight. That's quadratic and absolute. There was a cubic. Do you guys remember what a cubic looks like? Yeah. Uh, Does this pass the horizontal line test? No. no. It's quadratic. Yes. It, it actually, is it, maybe not this one, the one I drew, but the one that was in our foldable, it actually does. It does pass the horizontal yeah, line test. Okay? okay? Now, the reciprocal function. Does it pass it? Yes, it does. The greatest integer function, would it cross the horizontal line test? No. 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 no, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't, because think about it. When it hits one of those constant lines, it's more than once, correct? Yeah. Okay, so integer, greatest integer function will work. What about your linear functions? Yeah. 
Yes. Yes, it would. What about your constant functions? Oh. No, it wouldn't. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm missing one. The reciprocal. The reciprocal. Not reciprocal. It's the other R one. Radical. Radical. Does it pass the horizontal line test? Yeah. Yes, it does. Because it keeps going on and on and on, rising forever. Okay, so it's good to know that. It's good to be able to recognize these so then that way you won't always have to refer to your calculator to figure out, okay, well, I gotta look at the graph to see if it's gonna pass the horizontal line test. You don't have to do that. Once you perform the horizontal line test and you figure, you determine that you do have an inverse function, to find it algebraically, you follow these three steps. So, again, to make sure you always use the horizontal line test first before you go through this process, okay? You definitely want to go through this process just to find out that it wasn't an, there was no inverse function to begin with. Okay, so you do the horizontal line test. If it passes, then you replace f of x with y and then interchange x and y. Basically, switch. Then you need to solve for y. Once you've done that, you replace it with the proper notation to make sure that so no, you are indeed identifying the inverse. And then of course, state the restrictions in the domain. Okay, state any restrictions. So for here, this function for number one, what kind of function is it? It's a linear, and we just talked about this. Do linear functions pass the horizontal line test? Yes. Yes, they do. So since it does pass the horizontal line test, we're gonna replace f of x with y. We're gonna interchange x and y. And then solve for y. How do I do this? Add four. Put zero over x. If we put zero over x, that means we're finding the y-intercept. We right. just want to find the equation of the and inverse. So we're going to add four to both sides. Divide by two. And then divide by two. And then replace y with f to the negative one of x. Now here, you can write x plus four divided by 2, or if you want to go one step further, you can do x over 2 plus 2. Either one would be acceptable. Okay. Well, we, we haven't been doing that state of restriction. If there are. So our inverse is a what? What kind of function? Say again. It's a linear function, not a reciprocal. Reciprocal, where's the variable? Uh, At the bottom, but it's on the top here. This is a linear function, okay? With a slope of one half. And linear functions, what's the domain? Okay? Make sure that that foldable that we did with all your parent functions, you are committing that to memory. You need to know those things by Thursday when you guys take your test, okay? If you notice, we use them there, and we're also going to use them here. Okay, let's look at number two. Okay. What kind of function is it? It's a quadratic. It's a quadratic. Is it going to pass the horizontal line test? No. No, it's not. So there is no inverse function. Now, one thing you do need to be aware of. This parabola here, this quadratic, if they restricted the domain from the beginning, okay, if they put in a comma, x is greater than or equal to one, that means they are restricting the domain and they only want you to look at this part. Would this be a function? Yeah. Yes, and so then you would go through the process, but they would have to state that before you could do any of that, okay? Does everybody understand? All right. Let's look at the next one. What kind of function? Reciprocal. Do reciprocal functions pass the horizontal line test? Yes. Yes. So now we go through our steps. We replace f of x with what? Y. And then what's the next step? Swap, interchange, switch. Yes. Now we have to. We want to multiply both sides 
but y minus 2. So we got to get that y out of the denominator, you guys. Got to get it out of the denominator. So we have x times y minus 2 equals 5. One person raise their hand and tell me what can I do from here. Wait, raise hand. Wait. I can divide by x. And I can do it this way because I, I am multiplying here. Opposite of multiplication is division. And my last step is what, Alexis? Add 2. How do you divide by that? By dividing both sides by x? Because we were multiplying? Another option you could have done was you could have distributed the x through and then subtracted 2x and then divided by x. You still would have gotten the same answer, so maybe like two steps more. But I'm not done yet. I got to do my proper notation. And now I got to do my restrictions. The Lacey is correct. X cannot equal zero. So my domain is. Oh, okay. You said notation X such that. Very good. You can so do set notation here. Interval or set, I don't specify. So do whatever you feel more comfortable. If I want to do interval, somebody raise your hand and tell me what it would be to represent it does not equal zero, okay?
Just remember, everything gets switched. Things, okay? I thought that we could also look at that and know, and know as well, which is another way we could do it. Questions on figuring out the inverse? You can verify that two functions are inverses by doing the composition of the function and its inverse. And it equals the identity function, which is x. Okay? So if I give you two functions, I want you to, and I want to know, are these inverses of each other? You would do the composite of the two functions, both ways. And if they both equal x, then we have inverses. And then if one equals x and the other one doesn't, then we don't have inverses. So in this example, where we have f of x and g of x, we're trying to show that they're inverse functions. We're going to do f of g of x and g of f of x. And that's how we're going to determine if we do have inverses or not. So let's do this. g goes into f. Does everybody see that uh, composition? I took G and plugged it in for every X into the F function. Okay? Now that positive 4 and that minus 4 are going to what? Cancel out. So I'm going to have 6 over 6 divided by X. Is everybody okay up to here? We did the composite. We can drop the parentheses in the denominator because we're just subtracting a 4, and then the positive 4 and negative 4 cancel out. Now, if you had me, I had to do this a lot. When you have a fraction inside of a fraction, you do keep, change, flip. If you've never heard this, it's pretty cool, okay? It's like you chicken fries. You keep <laughs> the numerator. You change the division to multiplication, and then you flip the denominator. So it becomes x over 6. So then it ends up being 6x over 6, which is just x over 1, which is just x. Okay? So keep change flip. So it literally has to come out as just x. It has to come out as just x. First, I thought you were talking about like x as a function. Like what's that? When you do the composite, it has to be x in order for it to be an inverse. Questions? Yes. Uh huh. Whenever you divide, whenever you have a fraction, like the 6 over x inside of another fraction, in order to actually divide these, you're going to end up multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator. So you have to flip the denominator. That's where that uh, KCF came from. Keep the numerator, change the division to multiplication, and then flip the denominator. Okay? This way. Plug f into g. So I have 6 over 6 divided by x minus 4. And then I have a plus 4. I'm still trying to determine if they're inverse. i got to do it for both of them. I can't just do it for one. I have to do it for both. I have a fraction within a fraction, which means keep, change, flip. So my sixes cancel out, and I'm just left with x minus 4 plus 4, which is just So we do indeed have inverses. So you're showing that these are inverses, OK? Now the key word is show, OK? That means I already know that they're inverses. I need you to show me that they are inverses, OK? So you actually have to do the composite. You have to do f of g of x. So I need to physically see that you put g, the square root of x minus 10, into x for your f function. A square to square root do what? And negative 10 plus 10 is just? <laughs> just x. Same thing, I'm plugging in F into G. So 
since I'm just subtracting a 10, I can drop the parentheses and 10 minus 10 is just zero. And what's the square root of x squared? Okay. So yes, this is showing, okay? Now if I gave you two functions and I said, are these inverses, you would need to do the composition to determine yes or no. And it would, you have to do both ways, okay? Now, one thing that I do want to point out. If I just gave you f of x equals x squared plus 10 comma x is greater than zero, if I just gave you that and I asked you, is, is this an inverse function? Remember how I was talking about you would need to restrict the domain of a quadratic in order to actually find the inverse? That this part is restricting the domain. It's only asking for all of the x's that are greater than zero. So they're not even concerned about the left part, just the right. So if I... Exactly. This is the only reason why you weren't able to show that composition. Okay? You would have to restrict the domain. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Last thing. Uh, kind of already went over this, but just want to do an example with you guys. If you're given a graph of a function, you can always graph this inverse by locating points on the original and reflecting them over the line y equals x. So by basically interchanging the x and y coordinates and then connecting them with a straight line or a smooth oh, curve. That's fine. It can't cross and it can't touch the line y over x, especially if a point or part of the curve lies on that line. So these points of, tell me out, is that negative 5, 4? Yeah. Yeah. Negative 3, one. 1. 1, negative 1? And is that two or three? It's three negative four. Three negative four? Okay. So that means that all the points on your original get interchanged. Another word for interchange is what? Swap. Flip. Switch. So this becomes four negative five. What's the next point? One negative three. Negative one one. And those are purple points are the points on your inverse. So you plot those. And connect these points with a straight line. Because all these were straight lines. What this shows is it being reflected over the line y equals x. And as simple as that. Questions? 